Hello everyone, this is Dharmendra and I am working as a backend developer at Confirm and also an AWS Community Builder. So today we are going to learn how we can create REST API with API Gateway and integrate it with Lambda in the AWS Cloud. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll see what is REST API. So REST API is also known as RESTful API. So it's a, basically an interface between your server and client where client generate a request and uh, your server will, be, will respond back to your client. So how uh, it works with your API gateway uh, in the AWS cloud. So first of all, uh, you will see your client and whenever some client will generate a request, it will go uh, to the API gateway where you can validate your request, uh, your token or access token, whatever you want to validate. And once you validate a request, you will along with the validation of the request, you can transform your uh, input in the any another format and you can send it to your server and uh, from server uh, you can respond back to the api gateway and api gateway will again transform the response um, uh, in uh, whatever uh, uh, format you want uh, in your client side you can transform the uh, response and uh, send it back to your client so this is how typically it works in aws uh, cloud now come to integration point or you can say type for rest api so integration basically means uh, you have API endpoint and now you want to integrate with any AWS service or any another uh, endpoint. So first one is Lambda function. So you can integrate your API with uh, uh, Lambda function where you do your uh, some coding part and respond back to the API. Uh, same way you can integrate with any HTTP endpoint also uh, where you can do your stuff uh, similar to Lambda function and you can respond back to your API. And uh, third one is mock. Uh, uh, this is uh, generally for uh, use for testing purpose. So where uh, you will not require any backend, uh, you just uh, select it and it will respond you back 200. Uh, so you can test your API. And uh, fourth one is your AWS service, uh, where you can integrate your API with any AWS service um, and use it. And also you can uh, last one is VPC link uh, with which you can integrate your API. And now come to endpoint type. So we will see this endpoint type in a demo as well. So we have three type of endpoint type. So first one is as optimized API endpoint. So what is as optimized API endpoint and where we are going to use it. So let's say you have uh, a web application serving your users globally. So that time if you want your API to be very fast and quick. So that time you can use as optimized API endpoint. So uh, it doesn't matter wherever your client is it will serve your API based on the uh, uh, nearest region. So we will see in the demo how we can uh, do that. And next one is regional API endpoint. So let's say you are serving some clients in a particular region. Let's say you are serving in a India or you are serving in a, uh, a Europe region. So that time, if you want to generate one, create one API, you can select regional API endpoint and uh, uh, it will be uh, very fast for that particular region and the next one is private api endpoint so it's uh, there is some limitation with this api so you can only access this api uh, uh, from any amazon virtual private cloud so outside that you can't use this api endpoint so uh, let's see how all this stuff works in api and let's get started with the api creation so once you will log in with your aws account so you will land up in the aws management console and in the search bar we'll just search api gateway service and click it it will go to the api gateway uh, dashboard yes so as discussed earlier uh, uh, there are uh, some api types which uh, this api gateway provides here so first one is http api so it is a low latency api which i already discussed earlier and it has some limitation like uh, it will only work with lambda and http backends uh, uh, you can integrate with this api uh, basically and then there is this WebSocket API. So this API uh, you can use when you are building a, a real-time application like uh, some chat application and all. And then there is REST API which we are going to build today. And we can integrate it with Lambda, HTTP, HTTP endpoints, AWS services, other AWS services. And then there is one more REST API which is private. So like if you want to uh, create one API which serves only within a VPC, so then you can create this REST API. So let's click on this REST API build. And yeah, so 
uh, now it's asking to create your first api just click on ok and here is some options we are uh, uh, seeing here the first one is rest api and second one is uh, websocket so as i discussed earlier so uh, websocket when you are going to build some real-time application so we are not going to use this uh, websocket api so we will only use rest api for uh, this demo and then uh, we can start with creating new api or import some swagger file for open api and we can start with one example and uh, the example uh, json is basically uh, implemented here already for us it's basically a swagger file so we'll just start with example and then there is some endpoint type it is asking so uh, on uh, click on this drop down we can see there are three endpoints first one is regional uh, second is as optimized and third one is private so regional uh, is uh, something like when you are serving for uh, some uh, group of people or in a particular region if you want to uh, serve an api then uh, we can go with reason and as optimized is something like when you are serving uh, an application which is going to be used globally and uh, uh, people uh, uh, all across the globe can access your apis so they uh, means uh, you want uh, to be you want your api to be very fast so uh, at that point of time you can use this as optimized api and then there is private api so like uh, uh, within a vpc or uh, virtual uh, aws uh, virtual private machine uh, you can uh, use uh, you want to use any api so that time you can uh, select this uh, uh, private endpoint so it will uh, only allow to serve that uh, particular api within a vpc outside the vpc you can't use that api so let's uh, we will start with the regional one so just click on import yes so uh, it is saying that uh, your api is populated and we just need to deploy it okay so now here you can see a uh, few of the things like this is pets and then there is something called get and post so these are basically get and post are method and this pets is the resource so resource are basically the modules uh, of your application so like in this case this is a pets uh, which is one of the module and inside that pets we are saying we have get method so we can get all the information of the pets from this uh, uh, get method now if you see there is one more uh, resource which is uh, inside the pets basically this is nested resource so uh, what we are saying here uh, inside all these pets if i want to get uh, only uh, uh, information for a particular pet id so then i i am creating one nested resource with this uh, uh, pet id and i will just pass the pet id and i will call the get method and it will uh, bring me the uh, only the information related to the pet id so uh, uh, similarly we can create multiple nested resources uh, under any single resource and we can create multiple resources as well so uh, now we will come to get so what is this get so get is basically the method like if you want to get the all the details of pets then uh, we will integrate it with the get method and if you want to update few of the reco uh, few of the uh, response uh, pets uh, details then we can use post method and we can use the delete method as well uh, to delete uh, some records and uh, so on so let's click on get method and now you can see there are some method executions so this is method request so this is api interface uh, which will uh, directly uh, deal with the client side so whenever some client will request basically a client will call the api it will hit the method request first and in the method request you can basic you can check the uh, 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 validation for that request like you can check if that request is genuine or not and you can uh, validate the tokens if you are uh, doing uh, if you have some tokens and all so all those uh, validations you can do in method request now this is uh, second one is integration request in integration request uh, you will basically uh, be you will be doing basically the transformation of the input like 
uh, whenever some api call will happen so e you will get so many information like uh, api uh, uh, ip address of the client from which browser he is calling it and uh, uh, if there is any input he is providing all those information you will be getting in the uh, integration request and you can transform the request uh, uh, according to your need like whatever you want you can just uh, get those things from that input and uh, pass it to your function or whatever service you have connected and this is the point where uh, it will show which uh, which of the service you have connected with your api gateway so in this case this is just a http endpoint uh, which is uh, serving the request now in integration response uh, whatever output uh, this uh, http endpoint will send uh, will come to integration response and it can be uh, this can be uh, any aws service uh, or lambda uh, which will send the output and it will come to integration response now from integration response it will come to method response and here uh, uh, if you want to do some uh, uh, mapping uh, of the response based on uh, your client requirement so you can do all those mapping here basically before sending the uh, output to the client if you want to reform your output uh, so you can do all those steps here so now uh, let us test our this get method so we can test it out here so just click on test and click it again on the test now you can see there are uh, all the pet details it uh, gives us so now we can see there are three types of pet so uh, same thing we can do for this uh, pet id click on get click on test but here we have to provide the pet id so as we have seen that there are three pets so we'll just say i want the information of pet id uh, which is one so click on test and see it gives us the only uh, information of that particular pet id so similarly we can create uh, multiple nested uh, uh, resources under a resource and we can create uh, a similar method inside that so now we will create one resource and uh, we'll try to connect that resource with one lambda function so we'll go to root and uh, just click on excel click on create resource give the resource name so i will give it demo and click on create resource so similar to pet it's created one demo resource and now uh, we will create one method for it so again click on action click on create method and we will say get and just select it so now uh, it is asking us the integration type so if we go back to this get method and we check the integration request here so we can see integration type so in this case it was http so uh, this is the one http so this is the http endpoint from where we are getting all those pets information so now in this uh, get method uh, we will say our integration type will be lambda function uh, and you can uh, check uh, with http as well and you can uh, select mock as well so in mock you can just uh, uh, test uh, this is for testing purpose only so uh, here nothing is uh, nothing backend is required so uh, you can just select it for testing purpose and if you want to connect with any aws service then you can select it out or if you want to connect with any vpc link you can select this option as well so we will be using lambda function now we will uh, leave it the default uh, uh, this part and uh, proxy integration will leave it empty and uh, lambda reason so uh, you can say uh, in which reason your lambda is present so in our case uh, we are going to say it will be in ap southeast one which is singapore region in the same region we are going to uh, 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 create our one lambda function so now you can see there is no lambda function and if you uh, click enter here and uh, try to type something or uh, it will not give you the any lambda information here uh, if there is any lambda project it will provide the information uh, the name basically here now let's create one lambda function so here you can see there are uh, plenty of options by which you can create the lambda option so we will create from scratch you can use any uh, one of them so we will just give it the name demo and you can select the runtime from here you can select any runtime i will select node.js 
and uh, some permission it will be required so uh, uh, we can uh, uh, leave it by default as well uh, like create a new role so which will create a basic lambda role or we can use existing one so in i will be using existing one i already have one lambda role so i'll be using that you can uh, choose the default option and just click on create function so now here your lambda is uh, got created and you can see your index.js file and it is just uh, returning the response and response is nothing 200 which is okay and uh, in body we are just seeing hello from lambda and if you want to test it uh, you can configure the test event and uh, provide the test name uh, leave these values as it is just create the configuration and click on this test so here you can see the response from your lambda now we will go back to our api gateway and we will try to connect it here so we will just refresh it yeah now uh, we will yeah so now you can see our lambda name is coming so we will just select the lambda name and click on save so now it is asking that you are about to give api gateway permission to invoke your lambda function so we are we have to provide uh, the permission to our api gateway so it can invoke our lambda function so we will say okay now our integration request is done so now here you can see this is our lambda which is uh, integrated with our integration request and whatever response will come from this lambda will go through with this integration response and then with the method response so now uh, we can test it out and you can click on test and see you can see the output of your lambda function here now you will require uh, one api endpoint uh, from where your uh, front end will call all those uh, all these methods so for creating it if you remember in the starting uh, it asks us to deploy all these api so that is what we are going to do now so we will click on action again and we will click on deploy api we will uh, select the stage in our in case there is no stage so we'll create one so let's create one dev stage on like pp p test and uh, state description you can provide it's optional deployment description is also optional you can provide it uh, and or you can skip it you click on deploy so under stages you can see your uh, stage is now created and uh, this is the uh, main uh, url of your api and if you click on it test which is your stage name you will see the resources and for each resource you will see the method as well and if you click on that method you will get the api endpoint so this is the one which we have created uh, for our lambda function and just copy and paste it in the browser and see you are getting now the lambda response in your browser and if we go to this pet one and go to this get so you can see the slightly difference uh, here in the api uh, endpoint so for demo it is uh, after stage name it is a resource name and for this pet it is uh, pets so if we go to browser again and paste it you can see the response is coming to the browser now uh, we will go to our lambda function and uh, we will do some changes here we'll just print out the input event and we click on deploy yeah so now deploy is done we can test it out once yeah so test event name is this and if you see in the logs uh, our event is got printed and this is the those input parameters which we have configured in our test so now our input is getting printed so if we go back to our api and if we uh, come to this pet one 
and uh, well, let me create one new uh, resource inside this demo only we have to go to resource again uh, click on demo click on action create resource and this time uh, i will say uh, demo id or demo id and just click uh, provide the curly braces uh, uh, on the both side so now it's became like a, a variable so which we can uh, whose value can be changed and now we will create resource and inside this nested resource uh, we are going to create one method so click on create method again and we'll say it is a get method and select it again the lambda function same thing uh, demo okay click on action again and we have to deploy the api deploy the api to the test stage click on deploy now if you go to the test stage you will see the demo with the demo id and the get request and the endpoint is now here so if we copy our endpoint and go back to the browser and paste the uh, some random number here one and press enter so we are getting the response of from the lambda now if we go back to our uh, lambda function and we if we see our logs uh, we have to go to the monitor and related links go to cloud watch so all the uh, by default uh, all the logs for your lambda will get stored in the cloud watch so you can uh, see your logs there and now here we can see our logs so this one is the first one and this is the second one so if we click on the log you can see uh, that is, this is the first one where we just uh, test it out from the console and this is the second one so you can see there is no input in this case we go back and we refresh it yes so there is no input in this case now if we want this input this one which we have provided to be come to come in our uh, uh, lambda input so for that we have to go back to the api gateway go to the resources and go to the uh, that get function method sorry and uh, in the integration request you can either select the proxy integration where you will get all the input like ip address uh, of the uh, person browser uh, uh, details and all or you can go to mapping templates and you can create the mapping templates where you can say i want all this information you uh, basically you have to map this uh, demo id and uh, it will pass that demo id to uh, your lambda function so we will going to do that so we'll just create one uh, content type it will be application json click on check okay uh, spelling mistake yeah so now it is saying your current pass row behavior will pass all the request payloads directly to the endpoint without transformation so when we have selected this so that time what will happen it will not go to this application dot uh, application json it will directly pass through whatever the input we have passed and it will not transform the way we want so for that we have to say yes secure the this integration and then it will uh, ask you to create the template so here uh, in this case uh, uh, this will be done in the vtl language so which is the velocity template uh, language so uh, there we have to map uh, our uh, input which we are getting from the api and pass it whatever we want to the uh, lambda function 
so in, in our case it is a demo id so let's copy that demo id paste it here and as i said this is a vtl language so uh, you can uh, select google it and uh, you can get that language input dot params and in params you will get it inside demo id okay now we will save it now demo id yeah demo id is correct we will save it and again we have to go to action and deploy the api go to stage test deploy yeah now go back to your endpoint enter again yeah go back to your cloud watch logs just refresh it that is not came yet yeah so now you can see uh, the input whatever we have provided came inside the demo id key and which is one now go back to your endpoint again and uh, enter any random value now let's say uh, test and enter so now it uh, return the lambda response now go back to cloudwatch again and check for the latest log so this is the latest log now click on the log and you see uh, your demo id is present with the input test so this is how you can uh, map your uh, input uh, whatever you want from your uh, api and you can uh, pass it to your lambda function like this okay now i will show you uh, how it will behave when we will select the uh, proxy integration so we'll just select it proxy integration and it is saying are you sure you want to switch to the lambda proxy integration we'll say yes okay and it is just asking permission to invoke it again we'll say okay and let me remove uh, okay yeah, it already removed by default so now uh, we have to deploy it again deploy api test deploy now go back to your endpoint and uh, let's say this time we'll change it now press again enter so now you can see hello from lambda so this time our response also got changed because of the uh, proxy integration and if you go to our cloud watch and go to the log now click on your latest log now if we see the log you can see the difference so earlier we just got the test one which we uh, provided from the api and now is this time when we selected the proxy integration you see we have got so many information like what is the resource path which is our demo and then demo id what is the path basically with this demo id uh, what is the value we are getting and then the method which is our get and this can be a post delete anything and we are getting the headers values uh, we are getting so many things like query string parameters and then you can see path parameters which is demo id so whatever we have passed in the demo id came here as a path parameter and we can get that value from path parameter and then there is a body which is null in this case if it is a post method then whatever you will pass in the body it will come here and here you can see the uh, user uh, uh, related uh, details like from which browser he, uh, user is accessing that api and what is his os details all the information you will get uh, when you will check the proxy integration so uh, this is how the api works so this is how this api, API gateway works uh, with the all these uh, lambda function so you have to select the uh, resources and then method and if you want to create nested resources you can create nested resources as well and you can uh, connect it with your lambda function like this